Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's lecture will be uh, also about construction problems where similarity plays a very important role. Um, you obviously are encouraged to do all these problems just by yourself. All the notes on unizor.com contain all these problems. Um, and then listen to this lecture, whether you succeeded or not doesn't really matter. And after you listen to the lecture, I would encourage you to do it again just by yourself, just to make sure that you remember everything. Now, today's problems will be related primarily to algebraic methods to solve geometrical problems. Uh, personally, I think that uh, using algebra to solve geometric problems is kind of a heavy uh, artillery and kind of a last resort when you don't really find a purely geometrical solution, then you resort to algebraic. Um, but look, I mean, if you have to, you have to. So these problems, I will, most of these problems will be related to algebraic methods to solve geometrical problems. Okay, so, number one. Um, Right. The first one is actually about certain techniques. Uh, some of them you know. Actually, most of them you know. Some of them might be new. Uh, but is a, this is actually algebra of segments. Now, the simplest way is if you have a segment of certain lengths, how to multiply it by you know, 5 or something like this. So let me just go through all these uh, numerous examples of what can we do with segments. Um, and uh, I'll just explain how to do each one of them. All right, so, uh, now, a couple of conditions, right? Um, when I'm talking about some kind of formula, like this one, for instance. So, what I imply in this case is, X is the segment which we have to construct, segments which have letters A, B, C, D, whatever they are given segments, and uh, M and N uh, are usually uh, integer natural numbers, uh, which for instance in this case means multiply the given segments to by, by, by some natural number N, basically getting a segment whose length is N times the length of the segment A. So all these algebraic manipulations with segments obviously are related not exactly to segments, but to their lengths. Um, so in this case, construct a segment the length of which is n times greater than a. All right, so this is basically the first example uh, of this series. Uh, it also implies that, I also uh, always imply that there is a segment whose length is 1, and it's also given as well as segments like A, for instance, or B or C. So it's always implied that the segments of the length A, uh, the length 1 is given, units. Okay, now I'm ready to go through uh, the problem. So the first problem, multiply the segment by number N, simple thing. So if you have a cer certain segment A, you just uh, continue the line and using the compass just uh, put n times this particular segment. Now considering n is a natural number you can definitely do this and starting from the beginning to the end that would be your new uh, segment x whose length is n times greater. Okay. Now, this is just an introduction. There are some slightly more complex problems. Um, a divided by n. All right. A divided by n. Now, this is the simple thing again. So, if this is your A segment, uh, you can take any other segment, for instance, unit segment, put n times here, connect the ends, and each parallel line to this one will cut one nth of 
the segment A. The proof of this is in the similarity theorems. Sides of these triangles are proportional, obviously. So that's simple. Next. Okay. A times M over M. Well, this is obviously a combination of the previous two. First, you can multiply by M by putting one segment of the lengths A after another, and then divide the resulting segment by N uh, equal parts. Okay. Um, now, considering A, B, and C are given segments, how to construct this one. Now, or if you wish, this can be transformed into x over b as a over c, right? So basically, you have to find some proportionality between uh, the fourth proportional segment if you are given the three of them. Well, the way to do it is something like this. Uh, you draw an angle. All right. Um, you positioned your uh, A. Let's do it twice worse. Let's do it. A like B. Now you draw parallel and then parallel to this one. So that would be your x. a to c is equal to x to b. So the way how to construct it is using the compass you and any angle, you put the, the segment c after that b on this side a, you draw the lines, connect end of this to end of this and the parallel, and this will be your a, uh, x. So, again, the proof follows from the theorems of similarity. Now, these constructions, this and all others, are supposed to be really like in your repertoire or in your toolbox, if you wish. So, because more complicated problems obviously would be dependent on these ones. All right, next. Uh, Next is maybe a little bit strange. Now, what it actually means in this case, it means A times 1 over B, where 1 is a unit segment. So it's basically the same problem as before, but one of these three given uh, segments is a unit segment. And it's implied whenever you say something, whenever you see something like this, it's implied that there is a unit segment which is participating in the whole thing. Or, if you wish, x over 1 is equal to a over b. And again, the, the, the way how you construct it is a, b, and then you have 1, and parallel line, that would be your x. So, absence of the segment means you can substitute the segment of the unit lengths. Uh, x equals a square divided by b. Well, this is basically the same thing as before when I have a, b, over C, except the two segments are uh, equal to each other. So there is nothing actually to talk about. This is a simple thing. Then, X equals A times M squared. 
where a is a segment, m is a number. Well, you can always think about this as a times m times m, which means first you multiply by m your given segment a, and the result you will multiply by m again. So that's that's simple thing. Now I'm going through this trivial stuff just because other problems might actually use it. And I don't want to refer to something which is not really maybe obvious uh, from the first glance. All right, next. X is equal uh, square root of A times B plus C times D. Well, this is a slightly more complex thing. Now, if you remember, the theorem, uh, the Pythagorean theorem is where P and Q are cathode and X is a hypotenuse. You know that, which actually means X is equal to square root of P squared plus Q squared. But you don't have this, you have this, right? So, why don't you have first find P squared, which is equal to AB, and similarly Q squared, which is equal to CG. If you can find segments P and Q, which satisfy these equations, then you convert this into this, right? Because then you can use P and Q as two categories of uh, the right triangle, and then X would be a hypotenuse. All right, so now, basically, we have reduced this problem to, to these problems, well, similar to each other, actually. So let me just refer this problem to the next one, which is this. How to do this. OK. Here, I can actually refer you to a theorem which you probably remember. If you have a right triangle and an altitude towards hypotenuse, then p e squared is equal to a times b. Now, the proof of it is really very simple, because all these triangles and the big one, actually, as well, are similar to each other. So if you will uh, put the proportionality of the, line, uh, of, uh, of the corresponding sides, for instance, this angle is equal to this one, this one angle is equal to this one. So in this triangle, um, P over B, P over B, P lies against this double arc and B against single is equal to here A over double R to P. And that's where you get P squared is equal to AB. So this problem, which is actually next on my list, is the way how you solve this one. You first find P using this equation by building the right triangle and then the Q in exactly the same fashion. Um, how can you build that particular right triangle, which I was just, I could just erase it, unfortunately. How to build right triangle where an altitude divides hypotenuse into A and B parts? Well, easy. Use A and B, put them together, and use it as a diameter of a circle. Right? Since this is the right angle, it's supported by a diameter and half a circle. And then, in the point which divides parts A and B, you draw a perpendicular, and wherever it hits, that's basically your top point, top vertex of uh, this particular right triangle. And this is your altitude. So that's how you build this one. And using this, you reduce this, program, this, this problem to this one. And this you know how to do, because once you know P and Q, you just have a right triangle. This will be P, 
this would be Q, and the hypotenuse would be X. Okay, that's done. Next. X is equal to square root of M, where M is a number, basically. Well, again, let me use the, uh, the unit segment, because what it actually means, it means this. Meaning this is a segment of the length m, which is m times greater than unit segment. And this is the unit segment. So it's basically the same thing as saying this one. So these are two given segments, or given segments, yes. This one has the length of m times unit segment. This is the unit segment. And so you have to find x squared, which is exactly like the previous problem, where I had uh, not x, I had p squared, p squared e equals to a times b. In this case, a is m and b is 1. So you have, you have exactly the same problem and you use exactly the same method to solve this problem. So for instance, somebody is just asking you, okay, draw a segment which has the length of square root of 5, for instance. Well, that's how, basically. You use 5 and 1 as two different uh, 5. Well, this is actually 1. 1 and 5 as two different segments. You draw a circle perpendicular, and that's where you get your square root of 5. OK? Next. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it for these exercises. So this was some kind of a preliminary first part of this lecture where I just enlist all the different kind of tricks which you can do with segments. Um, the lecture Algebra of Segments, which precedes these construction problems, uh, explains some of these in a little bit more details. Okay, so let me now go to um, other problems where, as I promised, the algebraic uh, calculations will be involved. Okay, calculate the length of a second to a given circle from a given point, given circle, given point, you have to calculate the length of a second if tangent, so you have a tangent from this point has length A, and ratio between internal and external parts of a second is M, M over N. So this is your second. So this is point P. This is M, N. This is tangent. So P, N over M, N is equal to like M over N. So this is given. And the length of the tangent is given. Okay. So why the length of the tangent is given? Let's just think about it. I mean, obviously, it's related to a known theorem that the square of the tangent is equal to a second times its external part. So I know from the theorem, which I have already proven before, that a square is equal to 
Well, let's call this part x and this part y, if you don't mind. Uh, it's equal to x plus y, it's the whole second, times its external part. On the other hand, I have this ratio, which means what? Pn over mn, Pn over mn, which is y over x, oh, yes, y over x is equal to m over n. Well, this is algebra. This is the two equations with two unknown variables, x and y. All we have to do is we have to solve it. And that's not really very difficult, so let's just do that. And after we solve it, we will have some kind of a formula where x and y depend on a, m, and n, right? So what do we do? Well, we probably... Easier, probably, if I will use x from here. It's x times m is equal to y times n from this, right? x times m is equal to y times n. From where we get x is equal to y times n over m. Now that we can substitute to this guy. And what do we do? We have a square is equal to... Uh, open parenthesis y times n over m plus y times y. Okay. Now, let me wipe out this. We don't really need this anymore. Now, this is really a simple thing. This means a square is equal to, we can get y outside, so it will be y square times, um, I think I had n over m, right? That's my mistake, n over m. Um, n over m plus 1. Or a square is equal to y square um, m plus n over m. You transfer this into this part, y squared is equal to a squared times m over m plus n, and finally y is equal to, let's have square root of both, a times square root of m over square root of m plus n. All right. Now, if you know m and n, and you know a, how to construct this particular y. Because as long as you know how to construct y, your problem is actually solved, if you remember. So you have a point. This is x and y. So if you have y and you have the point, basically draw a circle and wherever it intersects our circle, that's your basically point which you're looking for in the straight uh, second would be what you need. Well, again, you can do it uh, step by step. First, you can multiply by square root of m. Now, what is square root of m? As I was telling, square root of m is something like p square is equal to m times 1, right? Then p is square root of m. So you built this particular segment p, and we know how. Now, another segment is q squared, which is equal to m plus n, also times 1. That would be this one. q is equal to square root of m plus n. And finally, you do y is equal to a times p over q, which again, we know how to do it. This is the fourth proportional if three segments are given. So construction is based on this formula. First, we do the formula algebraically, and then, having the formula, we know how to construct it. Now, um, people might argue that this is not, well, geometrical enough. And I agree, it is not. Now, if you know how to do it purely geometrically, fine. So much better for you. Now, this particular approach is 
in cases when you don't really know. As I was saying, this is some kind of heavy artil artillery, which you, you, know, you don't know how else it can be solved, so you go for algebraic solution, which might or might not be simple enough, but in this case, it's doable, basically. That's what it is. Next, construct a segment x with lengths having a ratio to a length of a given segment s. So x should have a ratio to s, which is given, uh, like squares of given segments p and q. So s, p, and q are given. So you have to construct x, which has this particular property. Well, let's just think about it. Um, you can actually change this into this. x times q squared divided by s is equal to p squared, right? Now, what I will do first, I will do this. So it will be x times y is equal to p squared, where y is equal to q squared over s. Now, I know how to do this, right? We did it before in my first preliminary uh, set of constructions. So first, I do this. Now, when I do have this y, I can do this. Oh, right, sorry. Since I know why, I can now build this one. So I'm referring back to the whatever the beginning of this lecture I was talking about, um, how to construct these different things. And basically, that's the approach. Do some manipulations, and you reduce this problem to a couple of those which you have already uh, known how to do. Okay, next. Find a point outside of a given circle such that tangent from it to a circle is measured as half a second from it through a center of a circle to an opposite end of the end. Uh -huh. So, you have a circle. You have to find a point You have to find a point x in such a way that the diameter, which is drawn from x through the center, is twice as big as tangent. Well, if you know the circle, you know the radius, right? So basically, you can consider this to be radius. These are three radiuses. Now, to find this point, I actually have to find this distance. All right? So let's call it, which letter do we prefer? W. All right. So I have to find W, which has this particular property that XM is twice as big as XA. Well, now we have many different choices. For instance, I can use the Pythagorean theorem in this triangle, OAX, so R plus W is a hypotenuse, R is a catetus, which means the Pythagorean theorem, theorem gives me the length of AX, which I can then, after I expressed it as a square root of R plus N, R plus W, sorry, square minus R square, It should be twice as big right? because we double it. And it should be equal to this one. And this one is r plus r plus w. So it's 2r plus w. So this is an equation which we can use to find our w. 
alternatively, which is probably the same thing, we know that square of a tangent is equal to product of a second by its external part. So different equation would be, so this one would be uh, one half of 2r plus w, right? I know that this is half of this. And this is 2r plus w. So the square of this thing should be equal to a product of this length, which is 2r plus w by external part. So that's another equation. And most likely, these are exactly the same equations. And whatever you solve will give you exactly the same result. Um, now, which one we prefer? Well, let's just take let's take the first one. It doesn't really matter, and try to solve it. Um, now, how can I solve this equation? Well, actually, elementary. If I will square both sides of this equation, I will have a square uh, w in, in the second degree, which means it will be quadratic equation uh, relative to w. Um, I wish I can do it very accurately. I might actually make a mistake, but let me try to do it. So the square of this would be 4r squared plus 4rw plus w squared is equal to. Square of this is 4 times this, r plus w squared, which is r squared plus 2rw plus w squared minus 4r squared, right? All right, so 4r squared plus 4rw plus w squared is equal to 4r squared and minus 4r squared. So r squared will go, go out, so I'll have 8rw plus 4w squared. All right? Looks like it. So what do I have? I have, let's move everything to the right. So I will have 3w squared. 4rw plus 4rw minus 4r squared equals to 0. Right? So this is a quadratic equation for w. Well, what's next? Next, we have to solve it. I hope I didn't make any mistakes on the way. But even if I did, Basically, the purpose of this lecture is for you to understand the concept. And I'm sure you will do it accurately yourself. So, um, w is equal to 6 minus 4r plus minus square root of 16r um, square minus 4 times this times this, this is a negative, so it's 48 r squared, right? I think I'm right. Now, minus obviously is out, because we are talking about segments, so w is equal to minus 4 r plus, this is 64, so it will be 4 r, 8, 8 r which is equal to 4 r over 6 or 2 r over 3. So that's our answer. So this particular problem has this solution. If this particular segment, which I call w, is 2 thirds of the radius, then the tangent would be half of the whole second, second length. 
by the way, it's kind of complicated uh, problem and the way how I solved it, but the solution is quite easy. Seems to be the right solution. Now, can it be done? <laughs> Here's another interesting thing. Can it be done geometrically? Can I prove that two thirds of the radius is exactly the distance if this is two two thirds two thirds of a radius now this is the radius, this is the radius can I prove that if this is two thirds of the radius then the tangent is uh, exactly half. Well, we can actually check uh, because the whole length would be what? R plus R plus two thirds of R. Right? So the whole length is R times one plus one plus two thirds, which is equal to eight thirds of R. External part is two thirds. So the multiplication of the whole second by its external part would be eight third R times two third R, which is sixteen third of R squared. Right? something is wrong. Nine. Now, I know that this length is, square of this length is this particular thing. So, what's the length? The square root of 16 ninths of r square, which is 4 third of r. And as you see, this is twice as big as this. This is the total length, and this is my uh, tangent. So this is kind of a basically checking procedure that I did the right thing. Or you can use the theorem of Pythagoras to check the same thing. Okay, next. Construct a second from a given point to a given circle that is divided by the circle in a given ratio. Okay. So, very similar. You have, but now you have a point. So what you have to do is you have to draw a second in such a way that AB over BC is equal to M over M. Okay, let's call this piece X, this piece Y. And since my point is actually given, I can also say that the tangent is given. Now, what does it mean that the point is given? Well, in particular, there is this distance from, uh, from the center of the square, and there is a radius of a square because the circle is also given. So I can basically calculate using this uh, uh, distance from the center and uh, the radius, I can calculate this from the Pythagorean theorem or construct this particular segment. Let's call it M. So AM is very easily obtained from the fact that point is given and the circle is given. But now I know that the whole length of the second, which is x plus y, times its external part x, 
is equal to a square, right? That's the known theorem. And at the same time, I know this ratio, which is x over y is equal to m over n. So from these two equations, again, I basically it's very similar to one of the previous theorems, uh, previous problems actually. Uh, I can very easily obtain uh, the values of x and y from this system of two equations with two unknown. Uh, so let me do a very quick substitution. So um, and, and and then I will just drop it. So from this, y is equal to. Uh, x times n over m, right? Y m is equal to x n. Y m, right? So this is the consequence of this. Now I will substitute it to this, and I will get x plus x n over m x is equal to a square, right? x outside, x square, 1 plus n over m is equal to a square. We have exactly the same as the previous problem. So x is equal to a uh, square root of m divided by square root of m plus m. That's it. That's simple. See, algebra helps. It's not easy to construct it purely geometrically. Well, at least I didn't even think about how. Algebra seems to be a simpler solution. All right, next. Given two circles of different radiuses, A and B, So this is A, this is B, and the distance between their centers, D. From this to this, we have D. All right. Expressed as an algebraic formula, the length of a segment from a point of intersection between center line, so I have to continue the center line, and common exterior tangent. So I have to basically find algebraically the position of this x. Well, the best way is call this distance to the nearest circle, x. All right, so now we have to, now this is perpendicular, and this is perpendicular, obviously. So I have to find x, which is the distance from a point x to the nearest circle, if I know the radiuses, the distance between centers, right? Well, uh, probably the uh, similarity of these two triangles is a good way to do this type of thing. So, similarity is x plus b, right? The, the distance from point x to this center is x plus radius, which is b, divided by uh, this hypotenuse, which is x plus b plus b. is equal to ratio between the radiuses, right? Because these triangles are right triangles. These obviously are right angles. So hypotenuses are proportional to these radiuses, which is B to A. Then that's it, basically. I mean, this is the equation. Um, so it's AX plus AB is equal to BX plus B squared plus BD, right? From here we get A minus BX 
a minus bx is equal to b squared plus bg minus ab, from which we conclude the expression for for x. Now, how to construct this? Well, actually simply. First, you do a minus b. Let's say a minus b is a minus b is your c segment, right? Then you represent this as b squared over c plus bg over c minus ab over c. Each one of these you know how to construct. And then you summarize these two and subtract that segment, and that's your solution. So that's the algebraic approach to geometric problems. I think this is my last problem, right? Yes. Okay, this is my last problem. Um, don't, um, don't overuse this. Let me put it this way. Most of the geometrical problems actually can be, found, uh, can be solved using purely geometrical methodology. Um, algebraic methods are not, how should I say, not beautiful enough, uh, not cool enough, or whatever, whatever word you can use. This is the last resort when you don't really know what to do. Then you can try to do it, to do it algebraically. Well, that's it. I do encourage you to do exactly the same uh, problems again by yourself, go to unisor.com and uh, in the similarity, geometry similarity, this is a lecture called Construction 3. Uh, and there are hints actually uh, in the notes, so they might, might actually help you to you know, make it easier at least for you. Um, now, if you register, you will be able to take exams. So I do encourage you to do this. It's always good to know how good you are. And well, basically that's it for today. Thank you very much.